So if you were to play some games with a group of animals, right? Which animals should you be careful about? The cheetah. <laughs> oh my god. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Han Ziyang and I'm a senior veterinarian here in the National Parks Board Animal and Veterinary Service. My current job scope actually entails reviewing and coming out with uh, the laws and policies related to animal health and welfare in Singapore. I'm also involved in some of the inspection work of animal premises as well as some of the disease outbreak investigations. This is actually something that we try to discourage. So in fact, some of our human food are actually toxic to our pet animals. Chocolates are actually toxic to dogs. And typically, the darker the chocolate, you know, the more toxic it is. Other human foods that are toxic to dogs would be things like grapes and raisins, onions and garlics, you know, and even macadamia nuts and avocado. And uh, there's also this misconception as well that uh, cats can actually drink cow's milk. So uh, in fact, cats cannot actually digest lactose very well. They can actually get some stomach upset and possibly even diarrhea. There are drugs out there uh, that can be used on both human and animals, but uh, it is very likely that the formulation and the dosage is quite different. Uh, some human drugs are actually toxic to animals as well. So uh, a very common drug, human drug, would be things like paracetamol or ibuprofen. So these drugs are actually toxic to dogs and cats. If the pet saliva is really that effective, then uh, I think we'll see bottles of saliva being sold at uh, pharmacies, you know, which is, which is a bit gross. La. While it is true that saliva does have a little bit of antimicrobial properties, uh, you know, your common soap, you know, your disinfectant that we use are actually a lot more effective uh, in cleansing our wound and promoting wound recovery. I think, unfortunately, I guess a lot of pet owners nowadays like to, uh, I guess, consult Dr. Google, you know, but however, this is something that I think most veterinarians would uh, discourage from. Just like, you know, a human baby, you know, when a human baby is sick and a human baby can't actually tell us uh, where he or she is feeling unwell, parents will usually bring the baby straight to a doctor or a pediatrician. So similarly, when our pet animals are sick as well, they can't actually tell us where the discomfort is and what is wrong. So we should actually encourage pet owners to just bring the pet straight to a vet, you know, let the vet do a thorough checkup and the vet will ask the correct questions in order to reach a diagnosis and recommend the correct treatment. So I think veterinarians often seen a lot of skin cases. You know, itchy skin could be caused by a variety of factors, including things like allergies or infection. But one other common cause is actually parasite infection. So if pet owners actually uh, give routine uh, anti-parasite treatment to their pets, it can actually protect their pets from picking up these parasites from the environment, you know, when they go out for walks or when they meet other animals. I think vaccination is also another thing that is uh, really very important. Uh, we do have a lot of safe and effective vaccines nowadays that can actually protect our pets from infectious diseases. So I would highly encourage all pet owners, you know, to read more about vaccinations and uh, in fact, the National Parks Board and the Singapore Vet Association, uh, we have just published the first ever Singapore vaccination guidelines for dogs and cats. And uh, we do this, you know, because we feel that uh, pet owners may want to learn more about vaccination and hopefully help to increase vaccination uptake. For dogs and cats owners, um, I think uh, it's always important to microchip your animals. So a microchip is typically, it's actually just this small little rice grain, you know, that we try and implant into uh, the back of the animal. And uh, it is actually a unique identifier, kind of like an NRIC, you know, for humans. In an event, unlikely, uh, unfortunate event that your pet is lost, uh, people can actually scan, the, uh, scan your pet for the microchip number and try and reunite your pet with you. Most people, when they think about a veterinarian, you will think about the animal doctor that is in a clinic, a vet clinic or a vet hospital. Um, actually, there are veterinarians out there that play a lot of other important roles as well. We have vets that are actually working with farmers uh, for food production and food supply purposes. Vets who are involved in uh, food safety work. 
Uh, we also have vets that do laboratory uh, testing as well as research and of course vets that do public health work like myself and of course you know conserving uh, conservation work and uh, protecting our biodiversity. So always wash your hands after you have touched or handled your pets and once in a while it's also good to do a thorough cleaning and disinfection uh, of the bedding as well as the toys of your pets and then for pet owners out there remember to vaccinate your pets as well as give parasite prevention.